I'll just tell you a bit about Fleek and Fleek Network, which is the project uh, I founded. Um, so basically, Fleek today is a Web3 developer platform. It's probably the most popular platform for hosting Web3 applications. We maybe have like 60,000 dApps who use us to host the front end of the application on more decentralized like hosting infrastructure. So today, mainly people use IPFS, but some people use other protocols like Filecoin, Arweave, the internet computer, um, and there's a bunch more that are coming to market now, things like Akash, <coughs> etc. But today, Fleek is built on all Web2 infrastructure. So we use AWS to run a lot of infrastructure, DigitalOcean. Um, so it's actually not really that much better than hosting on Web2 infrastructure because we ultimately could just, we're at the mercy of the Web2 infrastructure providers that we host on. And so we really wanted to try to figure out like how could you actually decentralize the front ends of these applications that connect to these smart contracts under the hood. Because the smart contracts are decentralized, but everything else about applications right now is not. And so they're very vulnerable to censorship or just um, like, yeah, that's a big one getting deplatformed, things like that. We can get deplatformed. Um, and so could a lot of other projects. And also, from a liability standpoint, that's the biggest issue plaguing Web3 right now, is like these DeFi founders are going to jail for writing open source code or getting fined millions of dollars, not for the smart contracts, but for operating the front ends that actually connect to the smart contracts. So it's a big problem to solve. We've been trying to solve it for four years. And finally, we decided we thought we had a good path forward to solve it with Fleet Network. So that was what we just raised 25 million for in October. And so basically Fleet Network is a decentralized edge network. If you're familiar with inter like the internet trends today in Web2, moving to the cloud was like the cool thing to do in the 2000s and the 2010s. Now the cool thing to do is move to the edge because like the first concept of the edge was what's called content delivery networks. And the whole concept was if you're serving data or files all around the world to people requesting it, you think of these big platforms where there's millions of people requesting it, it does not make sense to serve all that data from one location where the file or content is stored in like AWS US West. Because if someone's in China, it would take really long to get that file from Seattle or wherever it is and back to China. So content delivery networks basically just figured out why don't we just put this content in different locations around the globe, not much different than like physical infrastructure distribution networks, and then we'll just cache the content in memory. We won't even store it because it's super cheap to pull it in and out of, of memory. And so that's how a lot of I think 70% of internet data and traffic is served by content delivery networks. So this concept of decentralizing or distributing content to make it more performant and lower latency because you're always going to the closest node with the data to get it. But then people start realizing you could do other things on the edge. Things like serverless functions where you could do compute on the edge. You could put some data on the edge now. You could run things like Docker images on the edge. So all the coolest Web2 companies right now are edge-related companies. If you're familiar with developer platforms, things like Netlify, Vercel, these are all edge networks. They pioneered what's called application delivery networks, but it's their own proprietary networks of infrastructure. So what Fleet Network is, is really a decentralized alternative or decentralized edge network. So we're very focused on content delivery to start, just because that's a big issue that a lot of these Web3 storage protocols have. If you look at IPFS, Filecoin, we any project in the space, NFT, music NFTs, DeFi, it doesn't matter, every single person is using Cloudflare right now to accelerate content and provide good, good user experiences to their users. And that's like a really big issue plaguing Web3 because Cloudflare has already done things like censor the tornado cash front end or they're now shutting down their public IPFS gateway. So we really wanted to solve that problem because we use Cloudflare too. And so Fleet Network is essentially like a decentralized Cloudflare. So we could accelerate content from any underlying protocol or Web2 storage solution. Anyone can use it to accelerate content. It doesn't just have to be Web3 companies. And that's actually where we think we'll find a lot of early success 
is with Web2 companies because performance-wise, we're as good as Cloudflare. The network is pretty like bleeding edge when it comes to like Web3, uh, just cri cryptography innovations that have come through in the last year or scaling solutions. So we use Narwhal and Bullshark as a consensus mechanism. It's basically infinitely scalable. It came out of the Facebook like meta DM work. Uh, the SWE Mist and Labs team is the are the people who created it, but it's probably the most exciting thing outside of like ZK and proof based scaling uh, in terms of just like scaling consensus at like a base layer. And then it uses um, a basically hybrid ZK rollup to basically put our data on Ethereum. So we are basically inheriting security from Ethereum, but by using our own consensus, we don't have to worry about. Ethereum block times to confirm activity happening on Fleet Network, and that's how we hit the sort of throughput and activity level of a Cloudflare who's serving like 10 trillion requests a day. Um, they serve over 10% of all internet traffic. So if you really want something like this to work, you need to make sure it could scale like really, really big. Um, and so yeah, like performance-wise and testing right now on the DevNet, we're seeing performance as good as Cloudflare, but I think as we launch mainnet probably this summer and we get up to a few thousand nodes, we will probably see performance better than Cloudflare because they stop at 300 locations globally. And that's just because for them, the performance gain they would get from 10xing that amount of infrastructure wouldn't be enough to justify the increase in operating costs for actually having to manage and pay for all that infrastructure. <laughs> But with Fleet Network and the token and the algorithmic ecosystem, that actually should work. So we should have lower latency because we'll have more nodes, so we'll always be closer to the end user than them. And cost-wise, we will be probably at least half the price, if not way more. You'll, you're seeing it with all these decentralized web infrastructure protocols, the storage ones, the compute ones. They're maybe one one hundredth of the cost of these cloud platforms because they have a monopoly on the ecosystem and they're just marking up the cost of compute, bandwidth, whatever it is, very significantly. If you ever try to run your own infrastructure and see what the cost difference is, it's pretty significant. And so, yeah, we think not only Web3 companies are in dire need of this, not just developers and end users, but the protocols themselves, because they don't, uh, they don't factor in performant delivery at the protocol layer. Their token models are only focused on storage, security, other things. So a protocol like Arweave, they're paying upfront storage for 200 years, and now you're gonna get a ton of data on this network and you don't pay these nodes to serve it, that data. And so with Fleet Network, they're like very excited. So are a lot of protocols because they don't handle this part of the problem. And so they're all forced to stick Cloudflare in front of their protocols to actually deliver data to end users. And so we think a lot of protocols, we're starting with static data, things like files are super easy. And then we'll add more dynamic data. So all these data availability protocols, every single protocol has this problem. But after content delivery, we will also do some light compute, things like serverless functions, anything you would find on a traditional edge network or products or features that have proven successful on a Web2 edge network. Those are features we'll 100% add to Fleet Network. And so now you will have a decentralized sort of application hosting and delivery network where you can have a front end and a full application stack that pretty much is fully decentralized. We also do some other cool things. We have a EIP we just launched for NFAs, which stands for non-fungible applications, and it's a way to represent an entire application, all the infrastructure associated with it on chain. Um, so that's super cool. That's gonna launch in a few months, but yeah, we're super excited. Um, Fleet Network is the protocol agnostic Web3 developer platform. You can think of that as like the distribution channel and front end for Fleet Network, but also a bunch of other protocols. And then Fleet Network is the decentralized edge network that sort of powers the platform in conjunction with other web infrastructure decentralized protocols. And then NFAs is this new really cool standard. And that's how you fit all those three pieces together is what finally could get us to decentralized hosting where these founders and the DeFi or other spaces would have zero liability. You could be a completely a non-team and be able to pay and host an application all the infrastructure just owned by the DAO or token holders, just like smart contracts are today. So yeah, we think there's finally a path forward where we could have true Web3 for all these applications and not the fake state it's in now where it's just APIs to smart contracts and all the other infrastructure is just centralized. So 
I'll end it there, but thank you guys.